Hello, hello, hello. Okay, so hopefully what you're realizing is we are right here. We're actually, if you're watching this video, you're getting ready for the chapter 9C review. Quiz night, which means we have the quiz. Okay. And that'll probably be shortly after. Okay. All right. So that means we need to cut to the chase and get to where we're talking about well what is all of this volume and surface area and what's the difference between the two that's the biggest thing that you've got to understand is the difference between volume and surface area so you know how this routine goes basically what you're going to do is you're going to look at these three problems do these three problems and then i'm going to you're going to hit pause while you do those and then when you hit play you're going to see if you got the right answers and then if you're not if you got them if you got the right answer then you're going to move on and if you made a mistake you're going to go back reflect back on what you see here see in your work see if you can see what you did wrong if you can see what you did wrong you're going to circle that and maybe make some notes over in this section so that you can remember how to do that right how not to make that mistake and coach yourself up a little bit then what you're going to do is move on to the next one if you still can't figure out how you got it wrong, then what you gotta do is go watch the extended part of this video and see if you can learn how to do it correctly, or you're gonna know you got questions you gotta ask when you come to class. All right, so here we go. Hit pause, do these three pro problems, and let's see how you do with it. Okay, there you go. So you can see that for this first one, that your surface area is going to be 96 feet squared. Make sure you have the right units. Your second one, the surface area will be 1,260 feet squared. And the volume of this cube would be, or of this shape, the prism would be 18 centimeters cubed. Make sure you have the right units. Make sure you have the right exponent. These are the exponents. Okay. Now let's move on to the next ones. Okay, do these three problems. Let's see how you do on those. All right, <clears throat> so the volume of this example four comes out to 135 centimeters cubed. And the volume of this pyramid comes out to be 20 feet cubed. And when you look at this, if you're gonna have 12,600 inches cubed of concrete, you're gonna be able to make 35 bricks. All right, so again, I mean, you're done now with the review. If you can do these six problems and be accurate and get the right answers, you know what you're doing for the quiz. You're good. If you don't, now you're going to go back and just fast forward to the problems that you didn't get right. Now, remember, if you made a mistake and it was just you weren't being careful, that doesn't, you don't need to go watch the video. You just need to go back and make the corrections and make notes of what you need to be careful on. But as you're looking at it, if you can't figure out where your mistakes, those are the ones you fast forward to. You don't need to watch the whole video of me explaining how to do these problems. All you need to do is fast forward to the ones you don't understand. Okay, good luck with this. Hope you do well on the quiz. 
All right. Again, you're just watching this one if you need the help, right? So what we're looking at is what are all the faces of us of a rectangular prism? Now this happens to be a special type of rectangular prism. So if you're not sure if it is, then just do what we're doing right now. You can see what I've colored in is the, the opposite facing, right? Those two sides that are going to be congruent, which means they're the same shapes, which means they have the same area, okay? So then I'm going to write out my formula. So what we have is 2 times, because we have those two congruent sides, the length times width of the two faces that are equivalent, and then the top and the bottom, two of those, and two of the front and the back. Okay, so, but if you notice, when we fill these in, it's going to all be fours, right? So it's really six of the same thing. But here, I'll show you what that means. Notice that if I look at those dimensions of each one of those shapes, they're all four by fours because it's a cube, all right? It's a special type of rectangular prism. So really what we're talking about is six times 16, right? Which gives us 96 feet squared, all right? Now you notice I now you don't have to draw out each side, but if this helped you to understand it, then I would draw it if I were you. Because remember that we're talking about a prism, and if it's a prism, if it's a rectangular prism, there are six sides. And if we look, if it's a triangular prism, there are only five sides, right? That's the thing you gotta remember also, is that with a rectangular prism, you have opposite sides are congruent. And when you look at a triangular prism, there's only two sides that are necessarily congruent, unless it's an equilateral triangle. If it's an equilateral triangle, that's like a cube. It's, go it's gonna make things a little different. But in this triangle, all three sides are different because what they want us to understand is this side right here is the same as this side right here, okay? So that means that side's also 25 feet, okay? It doesn't, that 25 feet has nothing to do with the area of the triangle. So as we shade all these in, you can see the different parts, right? If you drew the net out of this shape, you would do the same thing, right? And if it helps you to draw the net out, then draw the net out. In a minute, I'll draw that net. But really, whether you're doing the net or not, you're going to be calculating the area of the two triangles and the three rectangles that go with this prism, right? Okay, so you're going to put in that you have, you know that you're going to have two of these triangles. So you got to use the formula for that. And then you just have these three. So we're going to do the length times width of those. So that's what our formula is going to look like. Our base and our height of the triangle is going to be 15 times 20. All right. The length and the width of this rectangle is going to be 15 by 16. The length and the width of the yellow rectangle is going to be 20 by 16. And the length and the width of the blue rectangle is going to be 25 times 16. And so some of you have already noticed that there's a pattern here. But if all else fails, you could just do these, right? Then you got to remember, this is a triangle. So you've got to divide that by 2, right? So basically, this is going to be 300 feet squared, right? Plus 15 times 16 is 240 feet squared. And 20 times 16 is going to be 320 feet squared. And then 25 times 16 is 400 feet squared. So we add those all up. And we get 1,260 feet squared. Okay. Now you got to be careful. Because if you got 1,560 or 1,540, I think is what it came out to be. If you got 1,540, actually 1,560 probably. That means you did not 
Remember that the area of a triangle is half the base times the height. And let me just tell you, that's an easy mistake to make as long as you catch it and realize it. It's, it's you can catch your mistake, but I mean, I'll be honest with you. I've made that mistake before and I understand this math. So if I can make this mistake and understand the math, then you can too. Now, for some of you, you might have wanted to draw out the, the um, you might have wanted to draw out the net for this. And so there would be your net, right? That's what your net should have looked like. And again, some of you like to do the calculations in there. So, I mean, I don't, I don't discourage you from drawing the net. I think it's a good thing. It's a good practice. It's a good way to be safe, okay? You could draw this, the net of the cube. It might actually bring some things to light and help you gain a better understanding so you make less mistakes in the future. Okay. All right. So now let's look at this next one. Now, when you look at this, you've got to make sure that you're taking, you're shifting gears. Okay. If you're not shifting gears, because there's a word there that should say, ooh, this is a different problem. And that word is volume. When we were trying to find the service area, we're trying to figure out how much does it take to wrap it, all right? And then when we're looking at the volume, how much does it take to fill it, okay? How much, and so we're talking cubic units, all right? And then we're gonna go, to, we're just on a, on this. So when we look at any, any shape that we're doing, prism that we're doing a shape for, or even the, the, for a pyramid, you're going to look at the base, which is the area of the base times the height. Okay. So that means we're going to take, you got to pick a base because it's a rectangular prism, but let's just go by general consensus. Let's just do the bottom. What we're going to do is figure out the volume of the first layer and then multiply that by how many layers there are, right? That's what the height represents is how many layers there are. As we look at it, we have the base which is the three by two. So that's the area of the base is three by two. And then of course our height is three centimeters. So that means the area of the base is six centimeters squared times three centimeters. This is gonna give us 18 centimeters cubed. Okay, that's how you do that. There's a, the key is, did you figure out the surface area, which would have been two times nine plus two times six plus two times six, which would have been 42 centimeters squared. Okay, if that's the number you got, you figured out surface area and it asks you to find the volume. So if you got 42 centimeters squared and you're trying to figure out what you did wrong because you weren't careful and you calculated the wrong thing, okay? All right, let's look at the next ones. So these ones, let's see how you did those. Again, you're fast forwarding just to the ones you don't understand, okay? And if you're doing the volume of this one, then again, what you're gonna do is you're gonna look at it, figure out what your base is. And when it's a triangular prism, the base is always the triangle. So again, what we're gonna figure out is what's the area of the base and understand that's one layer and it tells us that we have nine layers, right? So we're still gonna go back to the fact that we're doing the base times the height of the prism, right? And it's just that the base is a triangle. So for the area of the base of a triangle, we're gonna say that it's the, you could say length times the width, but it's gonna be the base, the lowercase base times the height right, divided by two because it's a triangle. And we don't multiply it by two because we're still trying to figure just that part out, right? And then times the height of meaning the nine, right? And so we would take six times five times the nine, right? Which means we're gonna have 15 times nine, which is gonna give us 135 and then we're talking about centimeters cubed because it's volume, all right? 
Okay, that's that's how you do that. You don't need a net for it because you're not trying to figure out surface area. You're trying to figure out how much does it take to fill this thing. Okay. All right, and then we look at this one. Now this one might be difficult in the fact that you have to remember a new rule because we talked about that this is one third of the volume of the prism it would have created. So you have to remember that you're taking the base times the height divided by three, okay? So that means we're gonna look at that base, which is four by three, right? So it's four by three. So we're gonna say we have the base, which is four times three, which is 12, because it's a rectangle, right? It tells us that this is 90 degrees, which tells us all of those angles must be 90 degrees. Therefore, it is a rectangle. It's a four by three times the height, which is five. And then we're going to divide that by three. So if I look, I could see that I'm simplifying these two. And I'm just going to get that it's 20. And then feet cubed, because I'm talking about volume. Okay. Again, there's it's remembering that formula. So I've talked to you about, man, make flashcards. If you can't remember this formula, make flashcards. Okay. All right, let's go look at this next one. This one, if you're thinking about it, you're really just talking about the the how how much does it take to make one brick and how much do you have total. So you're going to take your total volume and you're going to divide that by how much per one brick, right? Okay, so if you figure out your volume for your brick, you're talking about 12 inches by 6 inches by 5 inches. So you're, that's, you're finding the volume, so you're just doing the base times the height which is 12 times, you're gonna have 12 times six times five, right? And you're gonna, you're gonna divide whatever that is, you're gonna divide that into 12,600, 12, right? And so 12, that's 360. And you have 12,600. 12, okay, so you just do the division on which means that equals 35. So you'd say, it says, how many bricks did they make? They made 35 bricks. That's the answer. Okay, so as you're looking at these, I mean, that's probably the hardest one because you actually have to read it, put it together, and maybe you have to draw a picture, but I don't think you have to draw a picture. You have to remember the difference between volume and surface area. You probably want to remember those formulas. This is what a four would look like. If you're showing out, you don't have to draw the nets. You don't, you don't have to draw the net. You don't have to draw all three shapes, but showing me the formulas, right? Showing me the formulas you're using, which justifies your answer says this is how I know I'm getting the right answer and it shows me I mean it's got it should be neat and organized so if you make a mistake we can go back and look at it and see what your mistake was right you need to understand the difference between I think drawing the net might provide a safety for you a safety net yeah, okay so and then I think that really it's just knowing the difference between volume and service area and remembering it, the way to get an A is you got to remember the volume for a pyramid is that the vo that the pyramid is one third the volume of the prism that it would that would have those dimensions, and so you got to remember to divide it by three, and you got to be able to do the story problem. If you looked at that, I mean that's what your review is about. So right there, that's all of it in a nutshell. Good luck. Hope you do well on the quiz. Come with questions if you still don't understand something, but 
I mean, in all actuality, this was probably a 15 minute exercise and then coaching on the things you didn't understand. Hopefully that was worth your time investment. Good luck.